Hello everybody, I am Dr. Ram Gopal, a full-time practicing ophthalmologist and author of the Lifesaver book, Sure Success Magic for NEED PG, INICET and FMG exams. In this video, I will be talking about the difficulties faced by PG aspirants and FMG aspirants in studying anatomy for their exams. This is a problem which is common to all categories of PG aspirants, including the toppers. Probably one of the reasons or one of the main reasons is because anatomy is something which we study when we enter MBBS in the first year. Later second year subjects, third year subjects, fourth year subjects come and anatomy is long forgotten. Of course, anatomy does form a small portion of the theory papers in surgery and in ophthalm and ENT to some extent, but that's it. So by the time the hardcore entrance exam preparation begins, anatomy is long forgotten. So why is studying anatomy so difficult for PG aspirants and FMG aspirants? There are two main reasons for this. Number one, anatomy is huge, it is vast. The number of pages in Chaurasya's book itself you will find there are more than 1500 pages. And the other reason is that anatomy is more of fact filled in the sense what, where and which. These are the questions which, are, which we have to answer in anatomy rather than saying concepts of how or why. What is the uh, nerve supply of uh, this muscle or uh, where does this uh, blood vessel go or which is the structure which this arrow is pointing to. Those are the kind of questions which we come across in anatomy. These I feel are the two main reasons why studying anatomy uh, as anatomy itself becomes difficult. So how do we overcome this difficulty? Although I just said that anatomy is fact filled, these days the questions are not asked as direct facts. What do I mean by that? They will usually give you a clinical scenario. They will not ask you which nerve palsy causes a wrist drop. They would probably say a uh, trainee uh, nurse or doctor tried to give an intramuscular injection into the uh, deltoid or there was an injury uh, to the uh, humerus and finally resulted uh, in wrist drop. So which is the nerve affected? So instead of asking you directly as with what is the nerve injury which causes a wrist drop, they may ask you as a clinical correlation. So which gives you the answer basically in the sense anatomy is best studied with clinical correlation. Let us look at the upper limb and lower limb. Okay, Mainly you find the structures here are bones, muscles, nerves and joints. This is best studied along with orthopedics. Similarly, the bony spine, if we are talking about disc prolapse, you will uh, be talking about which area of the spine you will be studying the bony spine there. Whereas if you are talking about the upper limb fractures, lower limb fractures and joints in these areas, these are best studied along with orthopedics. Next, coming to the abdominal organs, that is the GIT, stomach, liver, pancreas, intestines and the renal system, kidneys, the genitourinary system, bladder, urethra, male genital organs, these are all subjects which you will be encountering in surgery. So these are best studied along with surgery. Similarly, hardcore surgery topics like thyroid, anatomy of the thyroid, anatomy of the breast or anatomy of the inguinal region, study this along with hernia. So whenever you are reading the surgical, surgical, surgical part of these subjects, read the anatomy along with this, it makes it much easier. There are some other structures which fall more into the medicine part like the heart and lungs that is the thoracic organs these come under the uh, cvs and rs parts or respiratory system parts of medicine whereas the brain cranial nerves and spinal cord the nervous system uh, would come under the neuroanatomy part these are more they form a part of the medicine so whenever you are reading these chapters in medicine read the corresponding part of anatomy there also This leaves us with a uh, few other areas of the human body. The female genital organs, best uh, reproductive organs, best studied with OBG. So the clinical correlation there becomes complete. Of course, along with ENT, we'll be studying the ear, nose and throat, where throat includes pharynx and larynx. Along with ophthalm, you'll be studying the anatomy of the eye and the cranial nerve supplying the eye. And general anatomy is something which is very general, the types of epithelia, types of cartilage, types of glands. Study these as it is. It does not fall into any particular area as such. 
and last but not the least anatomy by itself studied as words or paragraphs or bulleted boxes will not make any sense unless you have images to go along with these these could be images from anywhere these could be images from your textbooks or from your guidebooks or from your notes or from any atlas that you find or from google also but read anatomy along with images and it makes things a lot more easier and one of the things which is exclusive to INICET I would say so far is where they ask you about cadaveric images probably that is one area in INICET where you have to look at the uh, cadaveric atlas otherwise in NEET PG and FMG so far they have not been asking cadaveric images as such but more of clinical correlation uh, questions so I hope the short video helped you and uh, I'm sure many of you are following this already and you would be wondering why is this guy telling us all this we are already doing this so if you fall into this category great you're already do doing this for those of you who are not doing this start doing this and you will find that anatomy gets broken down into small manageable chunks and you will actually be able to finish anatomy and get most of the anatomy question uh, questions right so all the best guys study well